Hello, Peter here. In this episode we are going to start on our blob shadow component. This component will make it easy to give objects a blob shadow. We have already our material and uh, the function, the material function that can be configured to create all kinds of shadows. Now we're going to create a component to make it easy to work with these. Because the blob shadows are part of the SDL system, the system simulated dynamic light system we also need to make a start on what is called the SDL level data actor uh, we will later on see what that one does it basically is a le level global actor that is hidden that uh, regulates a lot of the stuff that happens with the simulated dynamic light system so here goes the first thing we need to do is to go to the SDL directory and create a new folder here. The new folder we will call blueprints. Now open that folder. In here we are going to create an actor. What we need is something that can contain our, our cube. The cube is still on the screen here. We need in the blueprint to create this cube dynamically put the material on it and configure it and in order to do that we need a static mesh actor so let's create that by right clicking here select on blueprint class and then here write static mesh and then you already see static mesh actor select that one and let's name this one SDL Shadow Container. If we open this one, we see there is nothing in this and we're not going to put anything in at all. What we're going to do later in another blueprint is to take this static mesh component and fill it with a cube. So this is all, all right now, just save it. and close the editor. Now before we can create uh, the SDL level data actor we need to have the SDL blob shadow component. So let's create that one now. Right click here, select blueprint class and then now we're going to take scene component. This one we are going to call SDL blob shadow component this is the one we're after open the component now the only thing that we want now here is just simply to create a custom event add a custom event and call that one SDL tick like that right now we don't we first need to create the SDL level data actor so just compile this and then save close it again so now we can create the actor right click blueprint class and now we select actor and call that one SDL level level data actor and let's open that one select the tab event graph The one we're going to work with right now is event begin play. And let's make a bit of space for that. The first thing we want to do is make this actor hidden. So set actor hidden in game is 
like that. And I'm going to create a variable and this is a bit optional but uh, I strongly recommend you do this. It's called initialization initialization delay and make that capitalized and the type of that is float yeah and I'm dragging that out and do a get and I will explain in a minute what it's going to do because what I want here is a delay with the initialization delay so why am I doing this well as I told you maybe at the very first episode is that I started with this in a game in a project where there was procedural level generation and uh, the whole simulated dynamic light system depends on knowing all the lights in the system and doing a lot of stuff with that and if it takes some time to generate the level you can't just race on here we need to wait for a certain amount of time for the whole level to be generated and even hold the ticking uh, the event ticks so that we don't start doing a lot of processing when 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 the level isn't even generated so that is one of the reasons why i want to have the whole event tick uh, the, the system in in my own control but also because it's more efficient so what we want this one we want to have public and then we have a another variable that is called hold tick and this one is actually going to be a boolean and it doesn't need to be public at all it for now it can be like it is and what we're going to do here is well, uh, we, we drag out this one it's that set hold tick and we leave this open so the whole tick variable is no longer set it will become clear in a, in a moment uh, what that does what is very important is that whole tick has the, the default value set to true probably need to compile the the blueprint first so that you can set this value make sure it is checked so when everything starts it is true all right then the next thing we're going to do is create another variable an array in fact and that is going to be an array of sdl blob shadow components and let's set that to sdl blob shadow component reference object reference and then we click beside it to make it an array okay now we're going to create two functions register sdl blob shadow and unregister sdl blob shadow I need to register every blob shadow in my level because I do the timing myself. The event ticks are replaced by the SDL ticks, so I need to know what's out there. So let's create a function register SDL blob shadow. It has one input and that is sdl nah we can call that just blob shadow blob shadow Oop. with a small h blob shadow the type of that one is our sdl blob shadow component object reference now we're dragging out the array of blob shadow components get it 
drag out and type add, select add. So we're going to add to that array. What are we going to add? Well, the provided blob shadow. And that's it. Compile this, save it. Well, come on. That looks a bit better. So, create another function, and this one we will call unregister the SDL blob shadow. And this one too has only one input, and that is called the blob shadow. And the type is already set correctly still from the last time, so we can leave that. But it is of course an SDL blob shadow component reference. Get the array, and now we do remove the item. and connect the blob shadow to the remove and that's it compile it and save it now let's return to our event graph so with the next bit now it all might be become a bit more clear what i'm trying to do here we need to have a bit of space here uh, i'm selecting all of them and moving them up a bit Here I'm going to create, firstly select them of course, something called a timeline component. Add a timeline. And let's call this one SDL FS tick. The FS stands for full speed. This particular uh, timeline is used to generate the SDL ticks and for the blob shadow we want them full speed so at the same uh, speed as the normal event uh, tick events we will later on have another one that we can configure to have different uh, different timing because not everything everything needs to have that speed but for now this will do nicely if you double click on that you will see these things I usually tend to set this one to one but we need to click auto play and loop so make sure that this is one auto play and loop we can compile that let's go back to the event graph and let's drag out our whole tick and do get because we don't want any tick events as long as this one is still set so from the update we are going to drag and make a branch and the condition we're going to use the whole tick if that is true we're doing nothing because this means hold the tick. If it is false, we are going to do a for each loop. And the array we are going to use is of course our blob shadow components. And for every in the loop body, that means every component that we have registered will, will enter into this loop body, we are going to call the SDL tick. And you see when you type SDL tick, it will itself come up with the SDL blob shadow component that we already created and only added the tick to. So select that one, but we need to have the array element as a target because it is the tick 
from that particular blob shadow component. So that maybe might have cleared up a few things for you uh, about what we have done and why we did it in the order that we did it, because it, it might have been slightly abstract. But what happens here, this one just creates ticks, just as fast as the normal event tick, but it holds them as long as whole tick is true. Now, whole tick will be released after a certain delay. And as I explained, that can be very handy if you have uh, levels that take time to generate. We also uh, hide the actual level data actor because it is, it's not something we want to see. So this is all we need to do. So when the whole tick is released, we are iter iterating over all the registered blob shadow components. And for each and every one of them, we give a single tick event. And we do that all the time. For every event tick, this will happen. Only it's not on the event tick itself. So that is considered to be a bit more efficient as well. Well, let's compile this. And save it. Now we can close this one. I think we've done quite enough for this episode. But at least we are now set for the next one where we're going to work on our actual blob shadow component implementation. So, see ya! Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series and don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!